What you're seeing here is literally the most expensive coral in the hobby today. It's called a bounce mushroom. And one this size can sell for a house payment on a million dollar home. In this video, I'll discuss the trendiness of super high-end corals, but look a bit closer at what the deal is with these mushrooms. For as long as I can remember, there has always been a coral that people just went crazy for. I understand it to some degree. This hobby, it's not something that people can just do passively. To do it well, it takes passion, and that passion leads people to look for the next best thing. It goes in trends. For a while, it was all about Acropora. Then people moved on to high-end zoanthids, and for the past few years, it's been chalice corals. It's now abundantly clear that the new king of coral hype is the bounce mushroom. So what are bounce mushrooms exactly? In short, they're Rhodactus corallomorphs, just like these guys here. Rhodactus mushrooms are incredibly diverse when it comes to coloration, size, and the shape of the vesicles on their body. They also tend to be beginner friendly. Rhodactus can tolerate less than pristine water conditions, and they're not really finicky about water flow or placement in the tank. You do have to watch out a bit when it comes to lighting, which I'll get into in just a second here. If you give a mushroom coral too much light, bad things can happen. Well, to be fair, too much light on any coral is a bad thing, but mushrooms in particular can form what are called oxide radicals, and these white tumor-like growths appear on their face. I don't have a picture to show you, but they kind of look like this. And that gets me into a bit of story time. This bounce mushroom is in Nathan Gist's tank, which I've shown several times on my channel. You would not believe the amount of grief I gave him when he first purchased it. He paid an arm and a leg for what looked like a half inch cutting, and I thought he was straight nuts. I mean, seriously, it looked to me that it had a disease or something. But the joke's on me. He's been propagating this mushroom for years now, and this single mushroom has more than funded his continued enjoyment of the hobby, let's say. He's now started a collection of different color morphs of these bounce mushrooms. Now what some folks are wondering is, are these mushrooms even real? The hype is certainly real, as people are paying a ton of money for them, but is it possible that they're just a nicely colored Odactus and they get these exaggerated vesicles when exposed to certain tank conditions? There was a recent article in Reef Builders that goes in that direction. And like I said, the first time I saw one, I sort of assumed it was because of overexposure to light. Lately though, I don't know. At Tidal Gardens, we've had easily 50 different morphs of Rhodactus from just about every geography and kept them under every type of lighting imaginable for years. And if anything, I would consider them very consistent in their appearance. They're not like SPS where they change to something completely unrecognizable from tank to tank. So for sure, I've never produced anything remotely similar to these bounce mushrooms. A couple of my friends are in Okinawa doing genetic research on zoanthids and paleothoa, and I wonder if there's any labs doing similar taxonomy work on corallomorphs. It would be really interesting to know whether these bounce mushrooms are genetically distinct, or if they're all closely related and their appearance is a result of tank conditions. Normally, I would say it's not cost effective to do a genetic test on a coral before purchase, but for the types of dollars being thrown around for these guys, you might want to know who the daddy is. All right, high rollers, there you have it. What do you think? Are you a big fan of these mushrooms? Let me know in the comments below.